Another year of the pandemic has come and gone. A lot of science news this year has been focused on vaccines, new variants, and the rest of our ongoing collective misfortune. But science has carried on, and there have been plenty of amazing discoveries this year that had nothing to do with COVID. We think that they deserve the spotlight, too, so here are three science stories that you might have missed this year. Since the 1980s, scientists have been pretty sure that dinosaurs died out during a mass extinction event caused by a roughly 10 kilometer meteorite hitting the Earth's surface around 66 million years ago. We've even found the likely scene of the crime, a crater about 180 to 200 kilometers in diameter on the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico called Chicxulub. But where that meteorite came from has continued to be a puzzle. It came from space, but we're trying to be more specific than that. We know from studying the crater that the object was likely made up of carbon, along with other elements. Previous research had pointed to the breakup of the Baptistina asteroid family, so it would be one of 2,500 smaller asteroids asteroids that formed after a large asteroid broke up 160 million years ago. But the Baptistina asteroids were made of iron and magnesium silicates. Also, the timing of the Baptistina breakup didn't quite fit. The other option was that it was just a normal background asteroid that just happened to hit the Earth. But mathematically, an asteroid from the main asteroid belt made out of carbon is only going to hit the Earth once every 3.5 billion years, which would be basically once in the entire history of life. Now, comets are more likely to be carboniferous, but a comet the right size hitting the Earth is even less frequent, like once every 4 to 11 billion years. So it's been a pretty weird mystery, but this year, astronomers at Harvard did the math and realized that a Carboniferous comet from the edge of the solar system could have been knocked off course by Jupiter, changing its orbit and sending it toward the Sun. When it got close to the Sun, gravitational forces could have broken it apart, sending pieces flying into Earth's orbital path. And the more objects crossing into Earth's orbit, the more likely one is to actually hit the Earth. Sure enough, their model predicts Carboniferous objects threatening the Earth at just about the right time and frequency to have made the Chicxulub crater. This is also consistent with other Carboniferous impact craters in South Africa and Kazakhstan. So these astronomers might have actually figured out where the comet that killed the dinosaurs came from. And 2021 wasn't just a big year for ancient critters, it was also a big year for ancient art. Several discoveries this year brought us some of the earliest known examples of hominin art. In Israel, archaeologists discovered a wild ox bone with six nearly parallel incisions dating back 120,000 years. Now, I know that a bone with straight lines carved into it may not seem like art, but anthropologically it's a reflection of what's called symbolic mediated behavior. These are practices where something takes on a meaning more than just functional use that depends on collectively shared beliefs. Funeral practices, decorative jewelry or clothing, cave painting and engraving are all considered considered symbolic behaviors. These practices are important in human history because they reflect the development of organized thinking and communication between members of a group. Now, the researchers can't say for sure what the incisions mean, because they don't match any previously discovered patterns. But whatever it represented, this bone is the oldest known example of symbolic representation from the Middle East, suggesting that collective symbolic meaning developed in the region earlier than scientists had thought. And in the Tibetan Plateau, archaeologists discovered the oldest known art made on an immobile rock surface. They found impressions of hand and footprints made in soft limestone that dated back to between 169 and 226,000 years ago. They were able to rule out that the handprints ended up there through everyday movement or from someone using their hands to stabilize themselves. The impressions were made intentionally. And what's more, they were made by children. That's right. These are basically the 200,000-year-old version of the concrete stepping stone with your handprint in it that is still in your parents' backyard. If that's not adorable, I don't know what is. Before this discovery, the oldest handprint art was paintings that used hands as stencils dating back 40,000 years, and these impressions are way older than that. And maybe more importantly, it may reflect that the earliest artists were actually kids, or at least that kids of the time may have used art and creative expression when they played. Ancient hominins. They're just like us. And we didn't just learn about human development this year, we also learned more broadly about mammal development. Traditionally, somewhere between 20 and 92 percent of our DNA has been thought of as non-functional. It's often been maligned as junk DNA. And the junkiest of our DNA are transposons, also called transposable elements, or TEs. These segments of DNA make up around 50 percent of the human genome. They jump around to different places on the genome, and as far as we've known for a long time, they don't do 
much else, except sometimes cause problems when they land. A few transposable elements have taken on new, more helpful functions over time, helping to determine how and when other parts of the genome get used. But it's not totally clear if that regulation is helpful or hurtful, or even makes any difference at all. So this year, scientists took a closer look at a specific TE. It's known to regulate the expression of a gene called CDK2AP1. That gene is involved in embryonic cell replication and when and how embryos implant in the uterus. They bred some mice that had the gene, but were missing the TE regulating it. And half of the resulting mouse pups died at birth. Normally, CDK2AP1 becomes more active around 24 hours before embryo implantation. When that gene isn't working, embryos can't implant correctly, causing serious complications for the parent and offspring. Now, other mammals don't have this same TE, but the researchers did find analogous sections of DNA in seven other mammal species, including humans. And all of them seem to switch on before embryo implantation. This is the first time that scientists have reported a TE being critical to mammalian development. But if mice can't survive without it, that suggests they need the TE to help switch on CDK2AP1, which in turn is required for implantation. And that is pretty compelling. Plus, it has implications for human fertility. A huge number of miscarriages in humans don't have a clear genetic reason. It's possible that the answer may actually lie in a transposon, just like with the knockout mice. So it turns out that DNA that was once trash might actually be treasure. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow, which was brought to you today and for all of 2021 by the generous support of our patrons. If you'd like to get involved next year, you can get started at patreon.com slash scishow. We have some great perks for you there, and also, we will be eternally grateful.